Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to E-Commerce Rocks. And today we have a special guest for you. He's being beamed down all the way from North Carolina, USA, and his name is Andy Beal. He's worked with many top companies, including Motorola and City Financial. You'll find him cited in numerous books, including The Google Story by David Weiss and The Search by John Battelle. And if his business credentials you're after, Andy's got those too. He took keywordranking.com from a few clients and a few staff to a company with over 180 employees and over 1,000 search marketing clients. And today, my friends, he's here to round up some of the top stories in the world of search. Wham bam, thank you, ma'am. This guy is the real shebang. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you Andy Beale. Okay, Mr. Beale, what do you have to share with us this week? Shoot. Well, uh, one of the things I thought we would look at today, there's been a lot of uh, buzz going around right now uh, with uh, the Yahoo Overture or Suggestion tool. And uh, a lot of people are a little bit concerned that that's going to go away. Uh, a lot of search marketers have uh, definitely relied upon that for a number of years to get a good understanding as to what people are searching for and what, which search queries are the most popular. So I thought we'd take a look at uh, some additional tools that are available and uh, also look, talk a little bit about some keyword research and uh, some practical tips for your viewers. Sounds wicked. Um, I have to ask you, my man. What are those Space Invaders all about on that wall behind you? Well, I don't quite have the uh, budget of a fantastic set that you have there in uh, England, Gareth. So uh, by the magic of uh, wall transfers, uh, we have some, uh, some uh, interesting Space Invader designs on my wall. It kind of uh, keeps things uh, just a little bit uh, low-key and casual around here. But uh, I can assure you the rest of my office is very professional. Okay, I got you. So tell us about the new tools that appeared this week. So with Yahoo moving over to a new platform, it didn't make sense for them to uh, continue to support the uh, Overture Inventory Suggestion Tool, which a lot of people use to check their uh, keyword research. But the good news is, is that a couple of other companies that are very popular with their keyword research tools decided to take, uh, take this opportunity to provide a free service. Um, those companies are uh, Word Tracker and uh, Keyword Discovery. And uh, they both have been very uh, well known for uh, their paid subscription models that they offer for uh, keyword research tools, and you can use either one of those. Um, but uh, in the last few days, they've actually come out with a free version of their tools. So basically, uh, search marketers can go to their site, and they can get access to a little bit more of a limited version of the, of the keyword research tools, but certainly uh, enough that even small businesses can uh, utilize the tools to get a better understanding of uh, which search terms are the most popular in their industry so that they can uh, target their search marketing campaign appropriately. Okay, so no more free data from Overture, but we can get free data from both Word Tracker and Keyword Discovery. So tell us, what's a good process that people can follow when they're researching keywords? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, certainly you can use these tools to do a lot of the keyword research, but there is a process that I think that most business owners should go through whenever researching their different keywords and want to target. Um, first step I like to call brainstorming. Um, nobody knows the uh, theme of a page or the content of your website better than you do. Um, take a look at your site and get a, try and get an understanding for what would somebody search for if they were to uh, be looking for the content on this page. If I was going to Google or Yahoo, what would I type in into the search engines and what's the most appropriate key phrases? And ask your friends, ask your customers, uh, anybody that you can, and just kind of brainstorm and get an idea as to what people would naturally type in if they were looking for the content on your particular page. And then the second step is to uh, take a look at the page content and kind of get an understanding as to what key phrases it's already naturally targeting. So if you know what the content is generally about, but it's a good idea to see what key phrases do you already have on there or there are mentions of a particular uh, keyword that keeps coming up on the page. So you want to try and get an idea as to what the theme is for the page already because that's typically where you're going to be getting traffic from anyway. The chances are the search engines have already identified a particular theme for a page. So you want to get, the first step is to kind of get an idea as to what you think the page is offering. Second step is to kind of really take a look at what you're saying on the page to see which key phrases are indeed the most popular on the page. And then what I recommend is the third step is that's when you start jumping into the tools that are out there and start looking at the different key phrases that are the most popular on the web. I'm sure like lots of people, I've used keyword research tools for many years, 
and I can't help but question some of the data that they give, because sometimes it just seems a little bit too out there. Do you think we should trust or question the data that these keyword tools give us? So when you're using these tools, it's important to realize that neither WordTrack nor Keyword Discovery have access to every single search query that's going on around the web. They don't, it's not as if they're tapping into all of the queries that happen at Google, Yahoo. They have their own selection, their own uh, database that they tap into. So really you're using these tools to get an idea as to what's popular within their database, database of tools. Um, certainly you don't want to take it for granted that when you type something in and it tells you that there were 5,000 people that searched for that key phrase, that that's how many people that are out there searching for it. It's relative to the size of the audience that they're measuring. And what you're looking to do is to take the key phrases that you've already brainstormed and identified from the page, put them into either Keyword Discovery or Word Tracker, and look at the relative number for the other key phrases that you think you might target. Put together a spreadsheet, keep track of the key phrase, keep track of the key phrase frequency, and try and brainstorm for each page maybe 20 to 25 different key phrases that are relevant to the page and also have good numbers. And then once you've got that information, you can kind of go back to your spreadsheet and start picking out maybe two, three, or four key phrases that are the most relevant. And also have good numbers of traffic to, um, that, that are appearing in the, uh, the tools. And then that will give you a good idea is, okay, these are the key phrases that I think are important. It's been backed up by the, the tools that I've used. There's good queries there, so I'm going to move forward with my search engine optimization campaign based upon these key phrases. Andy, that's a stack of great info. Tell me, do you have any other tips for people when it comes to researching keywords? Summing up, I think it's important to realize that um, not all key phrases are the same. They represent different stages in, in, a, in, a, in a consumer's or a potential customer's buying cycle. So some of the key phrases um, are going to be a little bit more generic, maybe research-based. And so you want to look for things that are, for example, DVD review or best options for DVDs, you know, those are going to be more research-based, and so you want to match those up to pages where you're not necessarily ramming down the throats of a visitor, oh, here, here's a product, buy it now. Right, so it's about presenting appropriate content for the keywords, taking into account the state of mind that the user is at. That makes a lot of sense. You know, there's different stages of the buying cycle, and you get all the way around to the buying stage where somebody actually types in a model number for a DVD player. You're pretty sure that you want to bring them into the exact page. They probably don't want to see a review. They're ready to go, and so that's where you try and match up your keywords appropriately to the right page. So, finally, when it comes to keyword research, is there anything else that people should look out for? Don't try and cram all of your key phrases onto a particular page. You certainly don't want to try and target five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten key phrases all on your home page, thinking, well, my home page is the strongest page I have. Surely I, sh I need to try and get all my visitors to that page. You need to look at your site. You need to look at the natural targeting of each of the pages on your site, understand what stage of the buying cycle the page represents. Is it something that's a review or is it a product page? And then try and match up the key phrases to those particular pages. If it's a very competitive term, you may only try and do maybe one or two key phrases um, that you target on the page. Well, that's been really useful, and thanks for taking the time to join us today, Andy. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure to join you today. I've uh, really enjoyed it. Uh, hopefully this information has been useful to your viewers, and uh, I'd love to come back and share some more information based upon the news that we see. Um, in the meantime, feel free to go to marketingpilgrim.com, and uh, you'll be able to keep up to date on all the latest search engine and just general internet marketing news. Well, it's been great to speak to Andy Beale on e-commerce rocks today. All that remains is for me to say thank you very much for watching. My name is Gareth Davis, and until next time, stay lucky.